Hey lovelies! So our holiday celebrations continue today with five delicious, easy but impressive, festive drink recipes. Now as you know, all month long I'm sharing easy but impressive ideas to really wow your guests, but that actually require very little effort. And today's recipes are just that. We're kicking things off today by adding a peppermint twist to a Christmas classic. If you've never made hot chocolate from scratch before, you are in for a treat and you won't believe how easy it is to make. I've got a saucepan on the stove, it's heating up over medium heat. To that, I am going to add about a cup of chopped semi-sweet chocolate. I like using semi-sweet because then I don't have to add any additional sugar, but if you are using a dark chocolate, for example, you probably will want to add a quarter cup or so of granulated sugar to your pot. And I'm also going to be adding a whole lot of whole milk to my pot. All we're going to do is bring that to a nice gentle simmer and continue to stir it until that chocolate has melted completely. How easy was that? Now we could stop here, this is delicious. You could serve it with whipped cream or marshmallows or whatever your heart desires. But we are making some candy cane hot chocolate, so of course we need a little bit of peppermint tastiness. Now you have two options here. If you want to keep this a little more kid friendly, you could always add a teaspoon of peppermint extract. That can usually be found at the baking aisle of your supermarket. Or if you're hosting a more adult affair, as I often am, you can go ahead and add a few ounces of peppermint schnapps to this. You'll just want to make sure that you are whisking this regularly as it goes in because you don't want your liquor to curdle your milk. Whether you're serving this as a mocktail or a cocktail, I absolutely insist you finish it off with some whipped cream and some crushed candy canes for good measure. Next up, we are making an incredibly flavorful caramel apple cider. This actually is made entirely in a slow cooker, so what could possibly be easier than that? I'm going to get started by pouring a whole lot of store-bought apple cider into my slow cooker. Now I'm using non-alcoholic apple cider. It's like apple juice except so, so much better. To that cider, I am going to add two apples. I'm just going to cut them in half. Then I am going to add some orange. Now obviously orange is a really beautiful, complimentary, festive flavor. And just before I get it into my slow cooker, I'm actually going to use it to hold my cloves in place. As you can see, the cloves are really teeny tiny, so putting them in the orange is going to make them easier to remove later on when it's time to strain our cider. Now you should be warned, these are small but mighty. They really pack a ton of flavor, so you don't need very many. We'll continue to spice things up by adding a few cinnamon sticks and some star anise to this. Our next step is going to be letting this simmer away low and slow for two to three hours. You really wanna give that cider a chance to get infused with these beautiful festive flavors. And just a few short hours later, this is what you are going to have to look forward to. Now we can remove and discard the apples and oranges. They have definitely done their job. I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. It is seriously amazing. And finally, we can add the finishing touches. In this case, I want to make this a caramel apple cider, so to do that, I'm actually going to stir in a little bit of caramel sauce. This can usually be found in the ice cream aisle at your supermarket where the sundae toppings are. Then for my final addition, I am going to be adding a little splash of butterscotch liqueur. Now of course the liqueur here is optional, but if you are hosting an adult affair, I think your guests will really appreciate it. And there you have it, some warm, spiced, comforting deliciousness that is really perfect for wowing your guests around the holiday season. Next, I'm going to show you a tasty take on an old-fashioned drink called hot buttered rum. Now, if you've never had this before, it's shockingly delicious. I have to be honest, the whole team was a bit skeptical when we started making it, and we all gave it a try, and it got two thumbs up. And of course, because it's called hot buttered rum, it all starts with some butter. So I've got a few tablespoons of room temperature butter hanging out in a bowl. And to that, I am going to add some brown sugar. Then it's time to spice this up. So we are going to add a little bit of cinnamon, some ground cloves, and some freshly grated nutmeg. We're going to use our fork to sort of mix this all together until it becomes a paste. I know it sounds a little strange, but stick with me. Trust me, it's gonna be worth it in the end. Once you've got your paste ready, it is time to bring this drink to life. To do that, you're basically going to put a tablespoon or two of this in the bottom of your glass, 
And then you are going to add a little splash of dark rum or a big splash, whatever makes your heart happy. And then you're going to pour over some boiling water. And as you stir it, what's gonna happen is that butter is going to melt, the sugar is going to dissolve, and you are going to end up with one potent, but super, super seasonal cocktail. Now we have also been trying to think of good ways to make this drink without the alcohol for those of you who don't drink. And I think the best way to do it is to use that same paste mixture, but instead of adding hot water to it, to go ahead and add some steamed milk to it. I think that could be really, really good. Now, if you're looking to serve something a little more on the refreshing side, I definitely recommend this really beautiful frosted eggnog milkshake. I've got my blender standing by here. To that, I'm going to add some really good quality French vanilla ice cream, and I'm also going to be adding a good helping of store-bought eggnog. Now, if you wanna make your own eggnog, I have a recipe for that. You can go ahead and check it out when you're done watching this yummy video. But since we are going easy but impressive here, uh, you can go ahead and use store-bought, totally fine. Now that the eggnog is in our blender, we can add a little spice with some cinnamon and some nutmeg, and then, totally optional, a good splash of bourbon. I know, there was a big debate over whether eggnog should be served with bourbon or with dark rum. You could actually use either if you want to or leave them out entirely, it's totally up to you. But I do think that eggnog and bourbon were meant to be together. On goes the lid, and we are going to blend this beauty up until it is nice and smooth. This beauty can be served all on its own, but I really think it's best when topped with a little bit of whipped cream and another sprinkle of freshly grated nutmeg. Come on guys, don't nog it until you tried it. Finally, nothing says celebration quite like a little bit of bubbly, but today we are going to take our bubbly to the next level by adding some beautiful blackberry flavor to it. This all starts by whipping up some blackberry-infused simple syrup. Now to do that, you're just going to heat a small saucepan up on the stove over medium heat. You're going to add one part sugar and one part water. Give it a stir until the sugar starts to dissolve, and then you can add some blackberries to that. We're going to let this simmer away for between four and five minutes or until those blackberries start to soften up and release all of their beautiful juices. And then we are going to remove this from the heat, strain the blackberries, and set this mixture aside to cool. So I know it is difficult to exercise patience, but it is about to be rewarded. We have allowed this amazing simple syrup to cool right down. So we are going to pour it into the bottom of each of our champagne flutes, and then we will get some bubbly going. Here we go, here we go, woo! Isn't that a magical sound? Now, I'll just put this out there. In a cocktail like this, you don't need to use the really high quality sparkling wine. You can use the sort of cheaper stuff because you have all of that gorgeous blackberry flavor that's going to be mixed in and make it really delicious either way. Just saying, save yourself some dough. I'm sure you have lots of other things you can be spending on this holiday season. So to create the ombre effect on these beauties, we wanna make sure that our sparkling wine doesn't hit that blackberry directly. So we are basically going to use a spoon to help redirect it. Doing this allows the sparkling wine to flow a little more gently and prevents the two from combining. So what you can end up with is this really cool effect where you have the red on the bottom and then all of your bubbly on top. So pretty, right? To give these beautiful sparkling cocktails even more wow factor, I like to finish them off with a sprig of rosemary and a single blackberry. I think it looks so beautiful and sophisticated. And the rosemary will slowly start to infuse the drink with flavor. I have to say, this cocktail makes for a very Merry Christmas. Guys, I hope you will give these tasty drinks a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo, because I love seeing all of your holiday creations. Keep in mind, all of these recipes are in the description box below, as always, so you can take a look for them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.